welcome back to my channel. This is Daniel with drdataservices.com. Today I wanted to show you a macro using an import statement. So what we can do to make this uh, import statement more sophisticated and be able to use the same set of code and be able to import multiple files using that. All right, so the main advantage here is we're going to be able to use one import statement to import we can either do multiple files or multiple sheets within a file. Uh, so there's a, there, the sky's the limit with this, and it's it's very versatile. So let's go ahead and get into it. And I want to kind of break down what's going on here. So we have our macro or our import statement within a macro. So here's the import statement. And instead of some of the key things that we'd want in here, like, for instance, a file name, we're creating a macro variable to replace that. So same thing with we're using sheet here to get the sheet name of the Excel spreadsheet. Um, and then we're going to name the, uh, the file that comes out of this, or the data set that comes out of this, the sheet name. So in this case, we're using a multi-tab data set, which is what I called it. Um, and then the one of the spreadsheets within the file is called data one. And I'll go ahead and show you that when what that looks like. So here we've got three tabs, data one, two, and three. Data one has a company name, date, and invoice. Uh, so this is what we're going to be pulling, just this tab. So let's take a look at it. Okay, so the way this macro is set up is the macro variables that this macro is generating are positional, meaning I'm indicating file is the first position in the macro header and sheet is the second. So because I've defined that up here in position one and two, file then needs to be called in the, when I actually call the macro, file needs to be the first position followed by a comma and then sheet needs to be the second. If you flip flop this, uh, you'll have some issues with your macro and it probably won't run. So just keep that in mind, it's positional. Um, there are other ways that you can do this. You can use an equal sign here and then have like a, either leave it blank or you can have a, a standard value there, which you can then override. So, but we're not going to do that today. That'll be it for another video. Um, let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. All right, so we've got our data set. Here's our data set. Now, the, to keep in mind, we could just use an import statement to do this to pull one data set like this. However, the main advantage of using an import, uh, an import statement within a macro like this is that you can call multiple, you can call multiple tabs or get all your data. So the main advantage here is that you can get all your data. For example, this Excel spreadsheet has three tabs or three spreadsheets. We can get all our data with three calls of the macro. So that's pretty cool and we can go ahead and do that real quick and you can see that. So you can see here we've got our first data set, the one we first called, we got the second one right here, and then the third one. So this is a simple way of condensing your code and making it more efficient Okay, now that we've got all our data in the system, let's go ahead and take the data and put it into a data set. Because we don't want to have to have three different data sets. That doesn't make sense. So I went ahead and wrote this program here. Very simple, just a data step. We're going to call this table append. And the set, we're going to use, we're going to say data one space, data two space, data three with the semicolon and run at the end. So this, what this is going to do, it's going to append all three data sets. So we don't have to deal with three of them. So what, 
let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Okay, great. So we can see that we don't have three data sets anymore. We have one data set, one larger data set. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, small time LLC, mid cap LLC is the company name, and big biz LLC. Uh, so these were the three different data sets. They are now combined into one. Keep in mind when you combine data sets like this, they need to be lined up properly or you're going to have issues. You might run into issues with your data. If you found this helpful, please like the video and leave a comment down below on what else you'd like to see. Well, that's it, guys. I hope you learned something new. If you did find this information useful, please like the video and subscribe to my channel for more programming content. See you guys next time.